Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa and in this video I'm going to show you how I've created this little bee eater bird with Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils on Fabriano Artistico hot press watercolour paper. In the description below I'll put a list of the pencils and paper that I used. If you like this video remember to leave a like and comment below and if you consider subscribing I would love that. For more of my work you can check me out on Instagram and for any of my work for sale or cards or merchandise you can have a look at Etsy. So let's get started drawing the rainbow bee eater. So if you're not familiar with this sort of bird it is a native Australian bird and this is a commission piece that I've completed for Christmas for a client. So to get started I've gone in with a dark sepia pencil just around the outline of the eye making sure to do a really light layer of the outline. So if you do make a mistake, it's easier to get up. I then use the Prismacolor white waxy pencil to put in the highlight. This is just to ensure that I don't get any color over where the highlight is and it makes it look really bright and glistening. Then I went in with the dark sepia and just went in darker around the outline when I was happy with the shape that I had. And then going over with the warm grey one to put down a nice base and this will make sure that it's nice and smooth. So because the eye of this bird is quite red I went in with a dark red colour and put in some of the reddy tones and then start to build up the darker colours with the burnt sienna, caput mortem violet and then getting darker around the edges with the dark sepia and more dark red. I also put a little bit of dark cadmium yellow in there because there was like a hint of yellow in the eye and then once the mid tones are in that's when you can go in with the darker colors and start to put in the little dots and different sort of speckles that you see in the eye making sure always to go around the highlight so you want to keep that nice and bright i also went into the highlight with a little bit of bluish turquoise to give it a little bit of a blue color and then over again with the prismacolor white waxy pencil so I generally like to start with the eye just because it's a really good place to build on from. So this is where I went in to start adding some of the mask. So around this area it was just sort of a black um, mask around the bird like from the beak through the eye to the back of the head. Although it does have some red colours in there so I put in a little bit of dark red. Caput Mortem Violet and then went over with the dark sepia to darken it all up because if you just go over with the dark sepia it will sort of be flat and even black and white colors sort of have different colors in them so you need to sort of see the tone of the bird and this is sort of a warm tone so that's why I went in with the red. So then moving on to the top of the head I went in with some of the yellows and greens in the really bright areas so usually I do a base of the warm grey one but because this one did have some really bright areas just above the eye I wanted to make sure that they stayed really nice and bright and if I put in the warm grey one it would sort of dull them down a little bit so I made sure that I went in with the colors straight away and then you can always glaze over with the um, green and yellow pencils again to make it smoother or you can even go over with the warm grey one once it's down. So then I just started to build up the colours. So for where the green tones were I went in with some of the may green, earth green, yellowish and then where the darkest ones are I went in with the olive green, yellowish and you can even go into the green with some of the red colours. So I went in with a little bit of dark red and that helps get the shadows in there and also makes it a cohesive piece because we've got some red in the eye and then we have some red in the green and it all sort of goes together. For the yellow and red at the top of the head I started with a base of the dark cadmium yellow and a little bit of the dark chrome yellow and also ivory as a base so that makes it nice and light and creamy color and then you can go in with all of the redder colors and I also went in with a bit of burnt sienna and caput mortem violet for those darker sections on the top of the head and then over again with the dark chrome yellow dark cadmium yellow to glaze over and also burnish the colors together to make it nice, nice and smooth so the beak on this guy was a little bit tricky to get the shape that I wanted. So remember to always go in with a really light pressure when you're doing the outlines 
because that will help you get the right shape and then once you're happy you can go in with a darker pressure I also went in with a warm gray one base over the whole thing and put a little bit of the Prismacolor soft white in the highlighted areas to ensure that I keep them nice and bright over the warm gray one I then did use a little bit of the sky blue to sort of give it a blue tinge and then went over with the dark sepia and started to put in the darker sections and blending it all together once I sort of finished and got to this point I was not happy with the shape so I went in and fixed up the shape a little bit to make it a little bit more pointy and making sure to leave a little bit of the section in the middle with a whiter color so I used the negative space method where I just leave sections white and try not to go over them with my darker colors I then also used the Prismacolor soft white to go in and make the lighter areas light um, in the middle of the beak and some of the highlights at the top and the bottom. So now that his face is in there, it's all starting to come together. So as I'm moving down the body and the breast of the bird. All right, just hang on a second. Look how ridiculously small this pencil is. Even with the extender, I still can't sharpen it. I think it's time for a freshie. Is there any better feeling than a brand new pencil? I really don't think that there is. All right, let's keep going. I used a ivory base to get that creamy color and then went in with the dark cadmium yellow, dark chrome yellow, and that blue color just underneath the black section is the light cobalt turquoise. This is a really sort of beachy light blue color and it's great for the tone on his face. I also went in with the beige red in some of the pinky areas and then where it sort of gets darker I use the burnt sienna and the orange colors and then the dark sepia which is the black colors underneath. Because I am right handed I then started to work down the left hand side of the bird so I wouldn't be leaning on the colour that I've already put down. And so when you're completing feather textures like this it's important just to really pay attention to the reference photo and sort of get all of the shapes in there with your lighter colours and then glaze over with the mid-tones and then you can go in with the darker colours and get all of the shapes and the curves of all of the feathers in there. So I really enjoyed doing the chest of the bird and the process I did for this was just to go in with a base of the ivory color and then looking at the reference photo I went over with the light cobalt turquoise where all the blue colors were then in the pink sections I went over with the beige red and then added in a little bit of the dark cadmium yellow where the orange sections are and then I just used the may green making sure I had a really sharp green pencil and then start to glaze over some of the green colors and then using the earth green yellowish really sharp pencil to do sort of upward strokes this will give the impression that the lighter colors are overlapping the darker colors and then it's important just to go through and start to darken all of the colors put in all of the shadows and I also added in some of the dark red into the bottom section where the shadows overlap under the feet and also some earth green. So moving on to the bark now I knew this was going to be one of the hardest parts of this whole piece so what I do to tackle a texture like this is just to pick sort of a small section of it so I picked about you know like an inch of the bark here and started to render that so I went in at the start with a nougat color and then just get all of the darker areas mapped out just because if you glaze over with your lighter colors straight away to get a base color you might lose all of the shapes and where all the dark sections are once you've mapped out all of the darker areas and you can go in and start glazing over the base colors so I went over with a warm gray one to start with and then having a look at the reference photo you can see where all of the different colors are so they're pretty much all the same colors that are in the bird so there's the dark chrome yellow may green dark red Cabot Morton violet then the blue colors like the bluish turquoise and the green colors like the olive green yellowish so just paying attention to the reference photo and building up the tones 
and then using the darker colors like the dark sepia Capitmortem Violet and the Van Dyke Brown to put in the really dark shadows and all of the sort of notches and little um, straight lines and zigzaggy lines that you can see in the bark. When it comes to texture like this, I don't always 100% pay attention to the reference photo just because there are so many little lines in the bark and trying to get them all in exactly the same place is very difficult. So as long as you have the tones in the right places, and when we talk about tones we're talking about the light and the darker colors so underneath the branch where all the shadows are you want to go in with a darker pressure and darker colors and then in the lighter areas you can also go in with the Holbein soft white or in this case I've used the Prismacolor soft white to put in some really light areas. Just having the light and the dark colors in the right places will make it look realistic and give you that sort of 3D effect as well. So when you have all of the color in there and you're happy with everything, this is when you can step back for a day or two and have a rest and then come back with some fresh eyes and see what you need to fix up. So this is the final result. I really hope that you like this video. Please give me a like and subscribe and let me know in the comments below what you think of my rainbow bee eater and I'll see you in the next video. Keep drawing guys. Bye.